Hello, this is Brother Ron Waters, and we're coming to you from Souls Harbor Tabernacle in Paducah, Kentucky. So we're on Flora Avenue. And so um, today I'd like to share a few scriptures with you. Hope that you can be blessed from the Word of God. The question came to Jesus when he was ministering uh, to different ones, and uh, they were asking him questions. These Spiritual leaders mostly were asking him questions. And, you know, the common people received him gladly, according to uh, the teachings of one of the uh, four Gospels. I believe it was Matthew. He said that, that the common people received him gladly. But you always had the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious Jews of that day and the chief priests of the temple and all that. The people who are in spiritual power, uh, they were questioning him how he had this power to forgive sins, how he had power to heal the sick, to raise the dead, and do all these miracles. They could not deny the miracles. They saw them. They knew the people that the miracles happened what, when it happened to them. They knew the people. They couldn't do anything for them uh, other than just teach them the Old Testament laws and things. But Jesus came along and he was, uh, he became the gospel of the New Testament. That's what testament stands for. You know, the testament meaning uh, what the person that passed on or is no longer with us, you know, they, they have a testimony. They have a testament. They have a will. They have uh, desires and, and things that they want to continue. And so his testament was that we continue the gospel. He told his disciples, he said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And he said in, in uh, the uh, last chapter of Matthew, and we'll get back here to Luke uh, chapter, uh, chapter 8. I want to show you something there. But in Luke, I'm sorry, in Mark, well, let's go back to Matthew. This is very similar scripture there. Of course, let's just go to the last chapter out of Matthew. And these are the teachings of Jesus, what he was telling them. This was after his resurrection, had, after he had appeared to them for 40 days. And he was uh, ready to ascend upon the Mount of Olives into heaven. And said, they, when they saw him, I'm reading in the last chapter, the 28th chapter of Matthew, when the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them, when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted, still some doubted, after his resurrection, after he showed himself alive among all the disciples, after he proved to them, and he said, give me a fish and give me some honeycomb and, and I'll eat this before you for a spirit, you know, can't do this, and a spirit doesn't have flesh and bone as you see me have. Notice he didn't mention the blood because he had shed his blood uh, for the sins of the world. He had already delivered his blood on the altar in heaven. And so uh, he was in a glorified body now. He didn't need blood. He was, but he was flesh and bone as they were because he had not ascended yet. He said, Jesus said to his, to, uh, unto them, he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the earth. Now he, he commanded them to wait for the promise of the Father. In John chapter 14 and verse 17, he said, He wait for the Spirit of truth. When he has come, he will lead you and guide you into all truth. And uh, he was a... Uh, uh, he, he was giving them instruction here, and in, this is Matthew's record. Now, in Mark's record, uh, one of the other disciples, that he was busy writing down things too. And in the 16th chapter of Mark, which is the last chapter of Mark, and it says in verse 12, After that he appeared in another form unto two of them, as they walked and went into the country, they went and told it unto the residue, Neither believed they them. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart. 
because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said to them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. You know, I mentioned uh, one time that as a young preacher, when I uh, was first starting to preach when I was 12 years of age, uh, me and my brother, you know, he was called about the same time. He was 18 years of age into the ministry. And we had a friend, uh, Ron Jeffries, I think was his name. It's funny I could remember his name that long ago. But I remember his name was Ron, too. And uh, we would go out into the woods on Sunday afternoon and practice preaching. All of us would get together. and He was a young preacher, too, but uh, he was already holding some revivals and everything. He was having good success at his preaching. But uh, we... Uh, visited him that afternoon and then he said let's just go out here in the woods and let's preach uh, to whatever creatures we find you know <laughs> and he was getting that scripture where Jesus had said go into the, uh, to all the world preach the gospel to every creature so we took that literally and we preached uh, to the grasshoppers uh, to uh, to the mosquitoes, uh, we preached to frogs, we preached to the trees, we preached to anything we could find out there that was a creature. We preached, you know, and imagining that we were preaching to uh, allow a large crowd. And that's, you know, something we have to have. We have to have vision. You see, right now, uh, I, I'm preaching to empty pews. I'm over here at the church and I'm preaching and bringing this gospel message to you. Someone asked me one time, said, well, how do you do that? How do you preach to empty pews? And I said, well, I imagine that they're full. You know, I can see people out there uh, in the world, not necessarily in the church here, but I see them out there. They're hungry and thirsty for the gospel. They're hungry and reaching out. And many churches are not feeding uh, a, spirit, a good spiritual meal uh, to their people. And they're going away starved, and they're 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 not getting fed spiritually. Amen. And so uh, Jesus had told them, "Go into all the world. Don't wait for people to come to you so you can preach to them." Amen. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Just make it simple. You either believe or you don't believe. But these signs shall them shall follow them that believe. These signs shall follow them. Not because they produce the signs, but because Jesus said these signs will follow because God follows his word. He confirms it. He said, In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now, if we're not doing those things as far as uh, the preaching uh, of, the, of the gospel and ministering to the people, if we're not doing these things, if we're just telling stories, if we're just uh, repeating stories or reading little scriptures out of the Bible, and, and uh, I've seen preachers that, that uh, have visited certain churches and they just kind of skipped over the miracles and skipped over uh, what the Holy Ghost was doing. And more or less just the teachings, the basic teachings, you know, uh, being saved and born again and baptized, you know, and joining the church and all this kind of stuff, you know. They were, they were focused on that instead of being focused on what Jesus had told them and commanded them to do. And he, has, he said, don't worry about the signs, just preach the word. The signs will follow them that believe and this is what it, what it says after uh, that scripture what Jesus just said uh, all the way through to the 18th verse so then after the Lord had spoken unto them he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God and they went forth this is the 20th verse Mark chapter 16 they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen, it says. The Lord went with them. See, He was still with them through the Spirit, through the Holy Spirit. He was still with them. His word was with them. When they preached His word, He was with them. And signs would follow if they preached 
and, and baptized and, and, and preached for salvation and preached for di divine healing, the signs would follow because it's God confirming His Word. It says, And the Lord, after they went everywhere and preached, the Lord worked with them and confirmed the Word with signs following. Amen. You know, I've never been concerned about uh, preaching about miracles, preaching about divine healing, preaching that what God can do, that God can do anything. I've never been concerned about it because that's what I'm commanded to do. And I believe that if I preach His Word, He will follow after the Word is preached. He will confirm His Word. He will perform the signs. He will perform the miracles. He will perform the healings. He will raise the dead. Hello. He, uh, he will heal uh, the, not only the brokenhearted, but He'll heal the, the heart diseases. He'll heal uh, all of these diseases in the world today because... You know, Psalmist David, he even recognized the healing that the Lord uh, would do for him. He said in Psalm 103, he said, uh, Who forgiveth all mine iniquities, who healeth all of my diseases. He didn't say some are, well, that uh, he, he used to, but, but now he uses doctors and all this stuff. You try to go to a foreign country and preach, you can't uh, be healed by divine healing. You can't be, you know, God's not doing those things anymore. All you've got left is what God put, placed in our hands, and that's doctors and, and, and hospitals and medicine. You go to some of those places and they'll say, what doctor? Uh, the nearest doctor is uh, maybe 100 miles. Or the nearest hospital is, is over 100 miles. We can't go because they're not close enough. And in some places, there's only like one doctor for 100,000 people in some places. And so, if that's literally what it meant to depend upon the doctors and, and, the, and the, uh, the, the, the medicines and things, it's not always available. Hello? And besides, those are people practicing medicine. Hello? They even call themselves practitioners. Come on. I even had a doctor admit to him one time. I said, well, I said, well, you know, doctors are wrong sometimes. He said, yeah, I agree. I said, after all, you're practitioners, aren't you? He said, you got it right. We are. We're, we're practitioners. And he said, we're practicing medicine. He said, you got it right. And so, uh, but I'm not practicing medicine when I preach that Jesus heals because I know he heals because he's confirmed it in his word. He said that. And he also follows his word and he confirms it with signs following. Amen. I'm not afraid to preach to people uh, that God heals and, and if, if they will believe that God can heal them and restore them to health. I'm not afraid to, uh, to tell the doctors and the nurses and every, that I'm believing God and, and uh, I'm trusting in Him. And, and uh, I know that He will never fail me. Sometimes medicines fail. Sometimes doctors fail. And, and sometimes uh, if we depend upon that, that too much, yeah, it's okay to, uh, to use them when, it, when we can. But not everybody can. Hello? It's not, it's not that way all over the world. In a lot of places, there are no doctors. There are no hospitals. There is no health care. Hello? And so, those people can e easily receive a miracle from God because it's the only source they can get any healing. Hello? And, you know, if we would just believe what God said in His Word, it doesn't matter uh, if the hospital's next door. We can still receive our healing, uh, our divine healing from God. Amen? And he is able, amen, to do that. And he wants to and he desires to do that. To give us the kingdom, he said, uh, he desires to give us the kingdom. He desires that we be uh, in health and prosper according to the word of God. In uh, 3 John, verse 2, he said, Beloved, I wish above all things thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. But you know what? Some people can't get their healing because their soul is not prospering before God. They're full of doubt and unbelief and fear. They're, they're full of these negative things, negative thoughts and everything. They never dwell upon the Word of God, which is positive, which will build your faith. You could build up your faith. Amen. Faith cometh by hearing in Romans 10, 17. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. 
We all have the same measure of faith that God has given to every man. He's no respecter of persons. He's given you as much faith as He gives me. It's how you use your faith. Amen. Put your faith to use. Trust in God. Call upon Him and believe Him and stand upon His Word. And every day, repeat those healing scriptures. Repeat the scriptures that He gives us. Repeat His Word. He will confirm His Word with signs following. Amen. Well, that's about all I have for you today. I have something else that I want to put on later. And I hope that you look it up. I uh, preached this message uh, in Joppa, Illinois, 16 years ago. A little bit younger then. Uh, and uh, I talk about the joy of the Lord. I talk about uh, how the goodness of God and and uh, how we can rejoice in our own spirit, and our own soul. So I want you to look that up. And we'll try to put that on for you. So God bless you. And remember, go with God and He will go with you. Amen.